Hello people, I am Chiranjeevi and welcome to this episode 3 of Rush series. In this video, we are going to see what is a data type and what are the scalar data types and what are the scalar data types that are represented in Rust programming language. So let's get started. Before talking about data types themselves, it is important to come to a conclusion that what exactly the data that we are talking about here. So the data which we are referring to here is the data which you are uh, using in your program. So let's say uh, you are taking the name of a user and uh, age, height, etc. And you want to calculate BMI of the user. So when you want to calculate the BMI of a user, you are taking some details from the user. Let's say you are taking name, age, height, weight. These are the things that you are taking from the user. Let's say let's call them let's call these as inputs these are the inputs from user and you want to calculate bmi let's call this as output you want to show this to the user or you want to store it in some database so to do that first you have to take this as input in the your program and then push it to the database you can't directly take whatever user is giving and put it in the database it's not possible you have to create an interface which is your program which will take user uh, input from the user and push it to the database after some verifications let's say the user didn't enter name or didn't enter height which all are required and uh, they didn't enter all of those and you can't push them into the database you have to make all these uh, verifications and then push it into the database so let's say if you are not pushing into the database you are just calculating and giving the bmis output even so, you have to take these as inputs. So now you have taken all these as inputs. So where are uh, where are these going? So they will store at the memory. All these are stored in memory. Which memory is this? This is main memory. As we know that main memory is volatile. So whatever we store in main memory, it is temporary. We store these as uh, store these for temporary, and then store it permanently in some database. Or we just want to give some output. We will just give some output, and the memory is gone. It won't be there anymore. So this is how it's happening. So this is what the data that we are referring to here. Now that we know what is the data that we are referring to here, now let's see the types. So if we are taking name of a user, it's going to be in some text format. Right, so username can be in text format, and when we see this age, height, weight, if someone asks you your age, you will say some number, and height, it's going to be some number in some say, centimeters or in some feet. All of these are going to be some numbers. So this is what exactly that type is going to be. So when someone asks you what is the type of the name, it's going to be text in layman terms. And when someone asks you what's the type of age, height, weight, it's going to be some number in layman terms. In programming, there are some uh, formal names to these types, but in layman terms, these are the types. In Rust, the data types can be broadly divided into two types, two further types. So this is almost similar to many programming languages. So one of the types is scalar, scalar data types. And the other type is compound data type so these names might uh, differ from language to language but still the concepts are same some in some languages these are called primitive non primitive but in uh, rust we call them as scalar data types and compound data types in this video what we are going to look at is these scalar data types let's see what's the major difference between scalar data type and compound data type so a scalar data type is associated with a single value And a compound data type is associated with group of values. So what do I mean by this? Let's say if someone asks you your age, we will tell your age whatever number it is. Let's say it is 22 and you will say 22. It's a single value. And let's say you are in a room and there are five people in your room. And let's say someone asks what are the ages of uh, every person in the room. So let's say uh, there are five people with ages 22, 21, 20. 22 again 23 
so there are five people and these are ages of five people so this is a single value these are group of values and if you divide them they will be a single value so basically a scalar value scalar data type is associated with a single value like this and a compound data type is a group of values like this when you divide them there will be a single value again and it's a scalar type that's a major difference between a uh, scalar data type and a compound data type so let's see what are the scalar data types present in rust there are four scalar data types so first one is integer and floating point boolean and character so these are four scalar data types that are present in rust and let's dive into them so let's start with integers there are two types of integers again one is unsigned and other one is signed so an unsigned integer can have only non negative numbers so let's say uh, an example can be 0 uh, 10 100 etc so these are all our integers and they are non negative a signed integer can have a value from minus 100 or even further back or uh, 0 or positive 100 and so on it can be anything in negative and it can be anything in positive so even in these both signed and unsigned there are different sizes so an unsigned integer is denoted with u and a signed integer is denoted with i in code so when you're writing code and you want to denote an unsigned integer it should be denoted with u and if you want to denote a signed integer it should be denoted with i but even in this u and i there are multiple sizes so they are like 8 u8 u16 u32 u64 u128 and similar with i these are the different sizes in unsigned and signed integers so what do they denote as you might have guessed they denote sizes so the numbers that here are representing the number of bits in the number so let's say you are storing uh, an integer which can take up to 8 bits so if you are saying 8 bits bit is nothing but 0 or 1 in binary so 8 bits in the sense there are 8 empty places in each empty place you can fit either 0 or 1 in all of this it can be either 0 or 1 depending on the combination it will come to, it will uh, turn out to be a number so when there are these many combinations what are the total number of uh, values that can be stored using 8 bits it's going to be since there are 8 places and there are two combinations it's going to be 2 power 8 which is going to be 256 so both unsigned integer and signed integer of 8 bit size can store 256 values since the unsigned integer can only store non negative values the values start with 0 1 and so on up to it can store only 256 so it ends with 255 since we are calculating 0 also it's going to be 256 values here in case of un in case of signed integers we can store non neg uh, negative values also so the values start from minus 128 to minus 1 to 0 to 1 and up to 127 which will cover 256 values so these are the ranges that an unsigned date and a signed date integer can store similarly with 16 32 64 you can calculate like this how many bits and uh, how many combinations it's going to be and how many values they can store and uh, depending on it you can calculate from 0 here and it can calculate from negative number to positive number in this case let's see what floating point is so a floating point is a number having a decimal point so all these numbers like 10.5 11.7 100 point something all these come under floating points so there are two sizes in floating points one is f32 another one is f64 as you might have guessed f is the letter which we used to denote floating point in code so a 32 bit size floating point can store single precision numbers so can give up to single precision only and f64 can give 
double precision so what do i mean by single and double precision so uh, numbers like 10.5 11.7 100.8 1000 point some nine all these are single precision there is only one number after dot point so in double precision after dot you can have two numbers so similar to 10.05 11.78 point some 99 all these come under double precision so this is the major difference between f32 and f64 so the third data type is boolean so boolean is a very simple data type because it can have only two values either true or false so basically we use a value of boolean type generally to show whether something is true or false so these are the only two values that a boolean data type can uh, possess and the last data type is a character so a character can be anything like a b c to z or any capital case letter like capital a capital z or any uh, special character like dot comma semicolon plus minus any of these or even emojis smiley emojis sad emojis all these emojis can be part of this character but it only contains one at a time one character at a time so it's a single character as we have discussed it's a scalar data type and it can have only a single value so these are the four scalar data types that are present in rust and we will discuss about compound data types in the next episode so make sure you like share this video and subscribe for the future episodes and that's it for this video signing off